Hello everyone, I am Zheng Han Xu, and in this video, me and my teammate Yi Han Du are going to talk about an innovative accelerator with analog arithmetic in crossbars that is applied in machine learning field. So um, before we get into details, I would like to first talk about some background information about machine learning and the past researches regarding to this field. Machine learning algorithm are frequently employed for mobile applications as well as for data analysis in back-end data centers. People have done quite a bit researches and proposed a lot of techniques to improve the speed of machine learning algorithms. I have listed some of the architectures and methods and I will briefly talk about each of them so that you can have a general idea before we dive into the core content. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the convolutional neural network. Convol convolutional neural network is a deep learning algorithm which can take an input image, assign importance to various aspects and objects in the image and be able to differentiate one from the other. It is designed by four different types of layers, convolutional, classifier, polling, and local response contrast normalization layers. Meanwhile, the convolutional layer is defined in terms of a collection of kernels or filters denoted by K. Each kernel is defined by a 3D array and converts an input feature map into an output matrix or feature map. The operation of CNN goes like follows. A typical algorithm in the image processing domain starts with multiple convolutional layers that first extract basic feature maps such as um, edges, color, gradient orientation, then followed by a more complex feature map giving us a network which has the complete understanding of images in the dataset. Afterwards, polling layers are interleaved to reduce the sizes of feature maps. These layers typically using a, use a maximum or average operation to map multiple neighboring neurons in the input to one output neuron. The normalization layers mix multiple feature maps into one. Finally, the classifier layers correlate the feature maps to objects seen during training status. The second concept I would like to talk about is the deep neural networks. Deep neural networks are typically feedforward networks in which data flows from the input layer to the output layer without going backwards. And the links between the layers are one way which is in the forward direction and they never touch a node again. Okay, lastly, the Dadena architecture. It consists three key features. The first one is that it replaces SRAM and DRAM with embedded DRAM. While SRAMs are appropriate for caching purposes, they are not dense enough for such large-scale storage. The storage density of embedded DRAM is around three times higher than SRAMs or DRAM. And uh, the second design characteristic of the architecture is to locate the storage for synapses close to neurons and to make it massive. This design choice is motivated by the decision to move only neurons and to keep synapses in a fixed storage location, which serves two purposes. The first purpose, purpose is having all synapses which are the most of the compu computation inputs next to computational operators provides low energy and low latency data transfers uh, low, da low latency data transfers and high internal bandwidth second the architecture is targeted for both interference and training in interference the neurons of the previous layer are the inputs of the computation. In training, the neurons are forward propagated, so neurons of the previous layer are the inputs, and then backward propagated, 
so neurons of the next layer are now the inputs. As a result, depending on how data are allocated to the nodes, they need to be moved forward or backward between these two phases. Since there are many more synapses than neurons, it is only logical to move neuron outputs instead of synapses. And uh, the last feature is the tile-based design. The output neurons are spread out, spread out in the different tile, so that each neuron function unit, unit can simultaneously process 16 input neurons. The figure on the left shows tile-based organization of a node. All the tiles are connected through a fat tree which serves to broad broadcast the input neurons values to each tile and to collect the output neurons values from each tile. At the center of the chip, there are two special embedded DRAM banks, one for input neurons, the other for output neurons. And the right figure shows the tile architecture. Every, every tile architecture consists of a neuron function unit with four embedded DRAMs used to, to store snap, snap, snaps buffer. And uh, okay, now we will get into the details of the paper. Um, in this paper, the researchers proposed a non-traditional accelerator that works especially well on deep neural networks. And why this architecture is non-traditional? It is because it uses an analog unit to perform the math, and this approach is worth exploring because new devices have made it possible to design an analog unit that can, that can very efficiently perform dot product computations, and these dot product computations are the fundamental of the computation. So um, I will start with the design of an analog unit that performs dot, pro dot products. Consider the simple circuit on the left with, with three wires, two resistors. Assume that the two resistors have conductance of G1 and G2. Let's say we apply voltage V1 and V2 at these two wires. So the first wire injects a current V1 times G1 to the vertical wire called bit line, and uh, the second wire injects the current V2 times G2 as well. These two currents add up to give a total current of V1 times G1 plus V2 times G2. Thus, as you can see now, the resulting current in the bit line is simply the dot product of the input vectors of voltages and conductance. I can then extend this concept further and create this dense grid of resistance that is shown on the right. I can set the resistance beforehand that gives, gives me this magic of conductance G and now when I apply a vector of voltages as input, the current in each vertical line or bit line is the dot product of the input voltage vector and the vector of conductance in that column. So the current coming from the bit lines are the results of a vector matrix multiplication, which is the bulk of all the computations in the deep neural network. This grid of resistance is called a crossbar, and each crossbar can be implemented as MEM resistor, which is the term here. However, there is a problem. The output is showing as analog current values. And for many reasons, the analog values have to be converted into digital domain. The reason is that this allows us to buffer the results so that we can send the results along long wires and prevent errors from accumulating. So this conversion is performed by this unit, which is called ADC or Analog Digital Converter. Uh, and the next, I'm going to hand over to my teammate to talk about the rest of the contents. This is Yi Han Du, and I will talk about the innovation in ISAC pipeline. 
Let's first go back to the Thalian architecture, where the neural weights are equally distributed across the 16 tiles on the chip. And it does computation layer by layer. So when the calculation of one layer is uh, completed, its result is collected, and the input of next layer is drawn from the EDRAM router, and it starts the computation of the second layer. However, for the for ASIC, tiles are only produced are only programmed to produce the output of one certain layer. So in this case, tile one is used to calculate layer one for layer one only, and the result of tile one is fed to tile two and tile five as the input. And when it finish the computation of, tile, of layer 1, the next set of data can come in, and such pipelining keeps all tiles busy and maximizes the throughput rate. And also, for, due to this distributed computation network, it reduces the buffering between the layers. Let's take a closer look at the ASIC chip. So the 16 tiles are composed of one EDRAM buffer, uh, which is used to feed the input and collect the output result. And the multiple IMAs stand for in situ multiply accumulate, where all the calculations happen. And on the right is a typical flow of ASIC calculation. It takes uh, 22 cycles to complete the computation of one layer. Uh, at the first clock cycle, the input data is drawn from the EDRAM buffer. And since we are dealing with 16-bit input, and we feed the input data one bit at a time, so that's another 16 clock cycles. And then at 18 clock cycle, uh, the combined analog current value are converted to the digital domain. And uh, then the sh its shift and add operation happens in both IMA level and tile level. And after the result is sorted out, uh, an execution function is triggered, and this result is written to the EDRAM buffer and ready to feed to the next layers. And the paper proposed three design metrics of ASIC. Uh, ASIC C stands for computation efficiency. And measured by uh, giga operation, and measured by giga operations per second per second by uh, millimeter square, and uh, ASIC P stands for power efficiency. It's a unit of giga operations per watt, and ASIC SE stands for storage efficiency, with a unit of megabytes per millimeter square. And after sweeping the number of crossbars, number of ADCs, the area of uh, chip, and uh, various other aspects, it turns out that uh, ASIC C and ASIC P are quite similar. So, with a balanced number of crossbars and uh, ADCs, uh, it is able to achieve a peak throughput rate of 45 tera offs per second with, with a storage of 63 megabytes. Uh, for ASIC SE, where the throughput rate is sacrificed for a higher storage, it's, impl it's implemented with more memory cell crossbars, but fewer ADCs. Uh, so if you have a very large neural network and it requires a lot more storage and the crossbars, 
so you may want to use ASIC SE. Comparing with previous work, uh, Dalian in 2014 and EIE in 2016, you can see that ASIC uh, it have significantly has significant significant advantage in terms of peak throughput rate and uh, storage. That is because it's uh, efficient pipelining and uh, distributed uh, computation network, and also the more dense and uh, fast memory store crossbar. However, uh, ISAC has two disadvantages compared to traditional digital accelerators. Uh, although the, anal the analog arithmetic implemented by uh, memories of crossbar is very fast, but its analog nature determines that it's more vulnerable to PBT variations since all the neural weights are programmed in the resistance of the memory store. And the second thing is, as the size of the, as the size of the neural network grows, the overheads of ADCs grows almost exponentially. So, and ADCs are the most power hungry part of ASIC. So this actually limits the maximum crossbar, the maximum network size of ASIC and thus limit uh, its maximum performance. And in summary, dense memory store crossbars can significantly improve the computation efficiency of DNs and CNs due to its uh, analog nature and the uh, Kirchhoff current law. However, working with such crossbar requires careful management of computation network. Uh, it requires uh, management of ADC overheads and uh, precision. And it requires data, smart data encoding techniques to reduce the uh, ADC to reduce the bit of ADC. And uh, finally, the efficient pipelining at multiple levels, at uh, IMA levels and uh, at tiles levels, it's a key of the high throughput rate of ASIC. And uh, such efficient computation network will be very valuable in the fields like uh, self-driving car and medical diagnosis. And thank you all for listening.